Okay. What's up, dudes? It's been a while since we've done one of these. Got uh, Matthias Welcome here. Welcome back. Welcome back. Or maybe they're welcoming us back. You into their homes and minds. It's like I a mean, thank you for your service kind of thing. You yeah. thank us for our service. We thank you for thanking us for our service. We're getting it done. Yeah. Yeah. Together, we're doing it. Together, we can beat this. We we are gonna f yeah we're gonna flatten the curve, curve as it were. Yeah. Matt and I are here. We just got our fourteenth, sixteenth COVID vaccine shot. I just feel I bad. feel well. I mean I feel I like feel a little like sick. I'm sore, and I can't really do the things I did in day to day life before. Right. But I feel very resistant. I'm hot. Not not immune. Yeah. But re definitely more resistant. I feel a more resistant. Uh, you know, body towards yeah. the COVID. I'm resistant to, vac to getting vaccinated. Um, yeah, so we wanted to dive into some stuff and then I think uh, this weekend we're gonna do a little bonus, bonus hidden track for you guys. A uh, little local, local flavor for you guys. Um, but uh, we were kind of, we were talking earlier today, uh, cause like obviously everybody in the Jiu Jitsu world, if you guys do grappling or anything like that, everybody's been watching the, uh, the Daisy Fresh Pedigo submission fighting stuff on Flow Grappling, which is you have it, you should check it out. It's it, it rules. It's every, worth like, a subscription to yeah. Flow just to watch. It's two seasons now. Yeah. It's pretty good. And if you if you are into jujitsu, it's kind of cool because right now, sort of the first time in history that as somebody who likes jujitsu, you can actually watch cool jujitsu shit. And, and Daisy Fresh is cool. It's like Rocky for jujitsu, yeah. but. Uh, so anyway, I've been watching that Andrew Wilty guys videos and stuff like that on, on Instagram and YouTube and he's always doing these fight videos and I, I really like him and he's a guy who could fucking absolutely yeah, murder me. But one of the things he's always talking about in his fight videos is he's like, you know, fighting is stupid guys, don't get into any fights. And I was like, mm. he has a convincing <laughs> point. <laughs> he makes, he yeah. makes a convincing point. I, I agree with him. Yeah. I agree with him sort of like, on principle that fighting is super unpredictable. Oftentimes people get really fucking hurt. Uh, they go to yeah. jail. You can definitely, rest. in one street fight, you can definitely, you can win and get injured and lose something that you are gonna feel the rest of your life. Like, Absolutely. I, have, I definitely have like little like clicks and stuff that are like, I remember. I remember, <laughs> yeah. And so I definitely agree with his basic point which is that and and he's like you know the, the ground is undefeated <laughs> like right. when you run into shit or you get thrown into stuff but also the cops concrete house. i won't say the cops are undefeated uh <laughs> certainly certainly not <laughs> but uh you know the the cops when they get involved can definitely yeah, right. uh can definitely win the day yeah. they've got an edge they're, well they've got a little bit of a support not system. a physical edge right. but the structure they got, a, they got a support system that's a that's a big gang a good gang but uh I think one of the things that Matt and I were kind of laughing about is that although we agree, we disagree because no matter how much training you do or how many times you compete or if you fight in the cage or in the ring or anything like that, it's not like street fighting. It's, it, it's so far removed from street fighting as to almost be not even remotely the but same. 100% is it's called, it's a sport. Right. It's still people who give oh only sport jujitsu and stuff. And it's like yeah. even to to UFC rules MMA, it is still a sport. There's still things that they cannot do. Right. That in a street fight you might only see groin kicks, twelve to six <laughs> elbows, eye gouges, Dude's taking people's you know, eyes all, and headbutts. Yeah. It literally if you're in a street fight and yeah. you stick to only the moves that are outlined by the UFC, you're probably gonna win <laughs> and win fast. Dick twist, right? rip it That's how different off. it is. And that's the thing, the stakes yeah. are so high. Because a guy might start eye gouging you. A guy might start yeah. going in biting. Because you know, you, you deal with a type of fear in a performance, like in a sport, that's more anxiety related. Uh, what you're dealing with in street fights is, is raw fear. Usually and fast yeah. and dudes dudes who are really scared are scary dudes because right. they will go to right. really far lengths. Uh, to win because of how scared they are. Especially, the more scared, the more dangerous. 100%. 100%. And so all that being said, there is stuff about being in real fights that sort of like competition stuff and sports cannot, uh, what's the word? It can't, uh, it's not a replica. It's not a one-to-one. -one. And so although, yeah, fighting can be pretty dumb, uh, it, it, it will also teach you a lot about the world and yourself in a way that like competing can't really yeah. do. Um, it was funny because we were also talking, if you guys get a chance to check this out, uh, 
there's a cool, uh, the, the show itself, the, the, most of the rest of the episodes suck, but uh, there's a little series on Netflix called Home Game, and they have a really good episode. Years ago, I shared around a, a documentary on YouTube about Calcio Storico, Calcio Storico <coughs> uh, from Florence, oh, which is like, shit. if you don't know what it is, it's like vaccine. rugby. Is that the vaccine? I don't, yeah, I think, well, you get, they say you have some, Flat there the are curve. some side effects. Uh, it, it's uh, Calcio Storico is like rugby, uh, soccer mixed with MMA. Uh, it's, it's, it's like fighting is not like a, a side effect of the game. It is the game. Um, but yeah, there's an episode on, on there where the guy's talking about the same shit where he's like, you know, there's a fear going into this that's different from like the fear that I feel like doing a sport or whatever because you know that it's unavoidable and you know that it's going to be bad and guys have like gotten their eyeballs ripped out and their backs broken and shit doing this. And uh, but yeah, so anyway, we we're, we're also laughing because we were reminiscing and like revisiting some uh, some fights, motorcycles, uh, some fights from our, our youth and how fucking stupid some of these things were. And I think that's the thing is most times, uh, most fights are over stupid reasons. They weren't over stupid reasons because the, the, the things that are stupid for an adult to fight about are the exact things that kids should fight about. Because sure. It's like you're under 18 and you won't be doing any time. Like you better, you got, you can earn your, offspring right? yeah, you can, you can fucking earn a lot of respect and really set yourself up, build the foundation for your capacity for violence over shit. Yeah. It's like minor, you're at a party and it's like minor disrespect. You can't let that shit fly. It's right. like prison. High school is like prison. Those age, that age is like, you gotta, you know, really you gotta stand up there for not getting your ass fucked. You, you better stand up then and you're not gonna, yeah. you're not gonna do it. Whereas later in life, it's like, you tend to think about the cops more. Yeah, you know the the problem with a lot of ours, and the one we we're thinking about in particular is that oftentimes our fight started over disrespect that we were yeah. on the issue end of because we were stupid well, see, fucking. We got heads. well, the, we got bullied when we were super young, and yeah. then by the time we came out, it's like a what do you call like, it? It's like a cycle. Stride. Yeah, it's almost like a cycle. <laughs> then it was like, yeah, we kind of. I would get drunk and bully some people. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I admit mean, to it. We you know, we laugh I mean, because they're, they're stronger for it. Yeah, our like our like fight milk at the time was like a tall boy of Mickey's, Mickey's ice, ice, right? Wonderful. Always the, tall, the, the big wide mouth Mickey's ice, and then fucking Andro and all these other like Andrew crazy. Was, yeah, yeah Andro totally was legal, totally legal, and we would just roll around on. So at, you you could you would take of, like take like Andrew Mickey's ice, Andro, and then like whatever. You know, if you had like some pills or if you had like Smoke speed like or it. whatever, and you just grind it all up and dump it into your Mickeys and then pound the Mickeys and you're going out on a weird cocktail of like hard drugs, yeah. uh, pro hormones and, and malt liquor. Yeah, right. And uh, this particular one started that exact way because we were out on this cocktail and like, well, so there was, it was we're young, <laughs> the, some rich ass girl. Uh, you know, you're in high school. Part of the herd. Um, I was just out of high school, so I was the only guy who had already graduated coming back from the high school party. Yeah. Uh, graduated. <laughs> yeah. I got my papers done. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was this just a huge mansion. And we get there to party, and it's already just done, like, don't Which it's, well, room, even, uh, you know, room, like, side yeah, note, this is, like, the rich area of Cheyenne, Wyoming, yeah. which, like, the rich area to us of Cheyenne, Wyoming, was anywhere that wasn't a fucking trailer park, <laughs> but, like, the Cheyenne Northside. pretty much is divided, yeah, by, like, north side and south side, and it's that small, where it's, yeah. it's, and it's quite literally, and the train the tracks. Valley and the west side. Yeah. But it's, like, the train tracks divide the shitty part of town from the good part of town. Shout out Sun Valley. Sun, Sun Valley. <laughs> Shout Valley. out. Represent. Valley. Represent Sun Valley. And the South. So Valley. anyway, yeah, we're up at this party at this fucking bitch's mansion. And uh, go on. Well, so how it starts is it was actually Paul's first night in town. He had come back that was from like my Alabama. First week or two. Yeah. Time was so, collapsed for you at the time right. because you were on a heady dose, not just of those malt liquor, right. but you were also mainlining. It was <laughs> early on. And I was like... Uh, I wanted to know, I, I hadn't really seen Paul fight in a couple years, I knew in Cheyenne it's a pretty gritty town, if you're partying you're going to be fighting, and I kind of wanted to see where his head was at and see, uh, you know, how he handled himself, and so I was like, look dude, you know, find some people and, you know, put some pressure on them, you know, tighten the screws on them, see what, see what happens, you know, and uh, so he picks a group of about three or four dudes over on that, kind of on the outskirts, 
and uh, starts, you know, just going in hard at him. But at a certain point, they're like doing push-ups for him and shit. <laughs> and uh, the drill instructor game. Yeah, but then they start to like get some resistance. Which this like, was no, always the frustrating thing is hanging out with Matt it, all through uh, through my twenties. Probably it's like Matt would be like, "Hey, go over there and like." scare a situation up and like get into the situation except then it, it, he'd never let you fight it yourself so it's like I'm over there talking shit to these guys because he was like oh yeah go over here and get into a fight and it's it is basically like some jailhouse shit because Matt's like oh go over there and like put it work for you yeah but it wasn't it was like the one guy who started like who, who bucked back or whatever it was like we were about to start fighting and all of a sudden I hear it's like I don't know, it's like the scene in, in Lawless or whatever where you just hear the dude like pig squealing and then he comes running through. And that's basically Matt. Like, I'm about to fight this guy and then Matt comes like bombing through, freaking out. And like, I think the dude like freaks out and gets in his car. We like kicked his yeah. car door. Like, kicked, yeah, I punched it with a pair of brass knuckles. Yeah, and then like he fucks off. And everybody, like a bunch of people, yeah, like probably six or seven people in their crew. Because, you you know, it makes everybody uncomfortable and whatever. But then we're kind of like, all right, that's it, whatever, whatever, party time. We continue to we drink, get our fight, in. fight oh, milk. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like the, there's no one more dangerous at the end of the night so than the like, who leave the strip club without right. getting laid. <laughs> right. So there's like, uh, we're on the north side, so it's like larger plots out there. And you can kind of see the main roads coming in. And we... Kind of totally forget about the whole situation. And then we just see a line of car lights coming down the road. And it's like, fuck, they're either, it's either a bunch of people here at a party, but most likely it's this dude has gone back and garnered and, his forces. And they did. And <laughs> they did. It was like Braveheart, dude. It was yeah. like 300 heavy horses. They must track. And we're like, <laughs> we're like, fuck. Okay. So they roll up. Well, the thing was, is it was like we had him and like, Names yeah, change, had, whatever, protecting the innocent, but it was like, there was like maybe four or five yeah. guys total, total, and like one of them couldn't yeah. fight for shit. Willing. Yeah, but willing. And so then like all these cars pull up, all these dudes jump out, and they're all like, you know, true blue, Ernest Tubbs country fuckers with like, and they've all got like billy clubs and chains yeah. and shit yeah. like that. Like they showed up ready to roll. And yeah. uh, so then they're like, they kind of, they're in a big circle, and the girl's mom comes out to tell them to fuck off. Yeah. And one of them steps forward and starts talking shit to the mom. Right? And Matt, as the as the so the, sped up to the gills, fight right. milk and steroids. Right. <laughs> he's not he's first, a first, I was like, I saw a lot of fear in some of the people's eyes, and so I started walking around as the confrontation was going on. I started walking around and looking at people that were super fucking scared. Yeah, and I was like. Are you gonna fucking do You're not gonna do shit. You're not gonna do shit. If you're not gonna do Put shit, your shit down. you go over here and drop your shit and you go Which over here. Which was hilarious because like fuck you up. before any punches are thrown, Matt's like he's 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 literally drawn circles and he's like, okay, if you're not gonna actually do anything, you go stand over here. So before like any punches get thrown, there's like a group of these guys who have already agreed that they're not gonna do anything. Relax the titles. <laughs> yeah. But then yeah, so the dude starts off. Starts fucking talking shit, and I believe I fucking started rape choking. Well, you picked him up and slammed him, and then that was like as soon as he picks the guy up and slams him down, it was fucking Man. bad one because there's probably being realistic, there's maybe a dozen of these dudes who are still fighting, but they they weren't they weren't great fighters, and they they didn't seem to have a ton of heart. But like some of the dudes were trying to jump back in. And so we're just fucking dudes up. And I look over and I see like the other two guys who are with us and they're dug into it. But one of them's got a broken ankle already. Yeah. So he's yeah. fighting with a broken ankle. He would later go on to fucking get locked up for like the rest of his life for yeah. fucking like kid touching or something, something fucked up. Kid but in, on this day, on this particular day, we didn't know this. We didn't know. He was a minor himself. Yeah, yeah he was man. still a minor, but uh, he I had a broken know. ankle. So we're all fighting. And I remember like there was just this feeling. It was the first time I'd ever been in a, a sizable brawl. You know, I was 17, I think, and it was the first, like, big fight that I'd ever been in. And we're fucking these dudes up. It just all went our way. This it doesn't always happen. Well, and, and, <laughs> you know, I feel good, you know, and it feels good and everything's just kind of working. You know, you're, you're ripping dudes up. And I look over at Matt and he looks over at me kind of in the middle of the thing. We just start laughing because we're both just having like, a blast. And, and then a dude kicks me in the back. And I turn around. Well, this, and was, see, this, was, this was like me and him. Like, some dude rolls in and, like... I think we're me both and Matt are both the fighting guy. the same. We're both hitting the same guy. We're cleaning house, and then some dude rolls across and kicks Matt in the head. 
but it was like a movie, man. I was like the T-1000 in this situation. <laughs> it's like, you usually, this doesn't happen, but right, like, right. dude kicks him in the head and Matt looks over at him and the dude stops and goes, shit, and he goes to run him back, gets him by the belt, pulls him back, starts wailing the shit out of him. So then we beat the fuck out of these guys. While we're beating the fuck oh, out of them, our girls, the girls that we're kicking it with are robbing their cars. Because <laughs> these dudes took their wallets CDs, out. So they wallets. steal their wallets, their CDs, they steal fucking everything. And then we run these dudes out and we're like, all right, get the fuck out of here. We've got all their weapons in a pile. We make them all get back in their cars and they all leave. They get about five miles down the road and they realize they've all been fucking robbed in addition to getting beat up. So then they have to come back and they said, hey guys, they're all fucked up and they're like, can we get our fucking CDs and our wallets back? And I think we gave them their IDs back, but we kept everything else. So that was like, that was an indicator. That's like a good fight story. That's like a fight story that's gone correctly. On the next one of these, we'll tell you about a couple of fights like he's gone fucking horribly wrong. But uh, one of the things I wanted to jump into, uh, I'm gonna, we'll keep this one pretty short, but one of the things I wanted to jump into is, uh, you know, we know a lot of you guys train, you're either lifting weights or you're doing jujitsu or you're fighting, you know, whatever it is. And uh, so I wanted to take a minute, you know, Matt's been teaching in here uh, in devotion all week. And uh, I wanted to kind of just get a quick rundown of, for some of the guys who are watching, especially the guys who are at earlier belt levels. I think one of the hardest things for me, um, probably still at purple, but definitely at like blue belt level was like, I never knew what I should be focusing on. You know what I mean? I, I kind of always, even with a coach, my, my coaching was kind of like traditional jujitsu where, where like you'll go in and every night you just get a different puzzle piece thrown at you, but they, there wasn't a lot of sequences right. or you series, don't really know what the which was. kind of is like, wasn't really being taught, I think almost anywhere at the time, like, you know, eight years ago or whatever, where they, that's everywhere now, teaches in these big sequences and stuff. Um, so what, what but would then you- if you miss a night, or two nights, yeah, or, and or you up. might even be training somewhere else. Totally, but then you come back. But what out. would you say if you could, if you could, in like brief, if you're like a white belt or a blue belt at jujitsu, what should you be focusing on like the most at white, and what should you be focusing on the most at blue? Right. So I would say, and I said this the other night in class, is that you know most places that have a curriculum uh, are in their beginners classes geared towards getting people to blue belt essentially, and generally your blue belt requirements are this real typical, it's almost as typical as the, like the self-defense part of it that the Gracies make you do, um, is that it's gonna be like, you need to know a triangle, you need to know, a, you know, they have this list of moves. Day one. That you need to know. Arm bar and, uh, and the thing is, my, I have a disagreement in that, is because I think unless you're a uh, guard playing tall guy, to me, the, the triangle from bottom is a very complicated move, and I don't think you're going to land it with a really high percentage. And so I think if you're a white belt... You mean like right when you get started. Right, right. right. Um, so I think white belt, and uh, you should be working on your guard passing and, a, and your sweeps. But also like white belt, you should be working on like defense and escapes and shit. Yeah, and you're, you're, that's just going to be natural. Right, you're, you're going to have to. Right, because you're going to get beat up. You'll, train you'll well. learn those things. But yeah. as far as like building your game is passing guard the passing. guard. Dude, because like, you know. Positional control. And, I, I like that because I would say that until I was halfway through blue belt, I couldn't fucking pass a guard for yeah. shit. You know, especially it was like a blue belt or a purple belt's guard and it was like. And, and you know what, that's the crazy thing that's like in common, right, with like a lot of aggressive white belts is <coughs> you can just sit there and let them wear themselves out because they actually don't know how to pass guard. Right. So they're just sitting there aggressing and just getting swept over and over or just unable to get past the guard, especially the closed guard. Right. Right. But like, so, okay, so guard passing, like like specific focus. Yeah, and I would also say. So if you're watching videos, because this is the right. thing, it's like right now you can watch. 8 million videos, 8 million different techniques, and I know a lot of guys are out there on I'm YouTube. A, I'm a huge future. proponent of the knee cut being the simplest. It can become more and more complex, but it has a driving forward idea. I, I'm a proponent of working the knee cut, choose one outside, you know, you should be doing Toriano drills sure. as a warm up. But, but so in basic, so, yeah, one belt, passing. Try, to, try to start working your pass, as yeah. well as like all your defensive and, stuff, but yeah. you get a real big leg up and, and you get a money swing. And so don't, money sweep. don't like don't like smother yourself at white belt with eight billion uh, techniques. That's what blue belt's for, right. <laughs> is to like smother yourself. So like at blue belt, if you are you're no longer a white belt, you've got a little bit of game, or at least you kind of know the rules, you know what's going on. What would you advise dudes do to like start 
figuring out a game. This is where you start your sequence and you build forward and backward from the position that you find yourself in the most, all okay, right? So let's say you're top side, all right? And at white belt, you go, you get into top side, you look for the Kimura, for the they buck, the they, they, they escape it, and you maybe you got swept or whatever, and you're completely, now you're six moves away from getting a Kimura again. So you gotta get into top moves. side, right. So you have to, number one, you work backward to your setup, and you work that more. So you work your knee cut even more, your guard pass even more, because right. you want to get to side control. And then you work your positional control more, so that you're not getting bucked, right? Yeah. Then you you work on also the the finishing details okay. of the submission, should and you then be, you work on the should you, be, should you be choosing like a, a favorite submission and, and using your sequences to like get to the close? Yeah, so like generally, uh, generally when you, um, by, you know, late white belt, you have a favorite submission. Even right? if it won't be in another year. Right. So you're but gonna, so white so white so blue belt is like sequencing to that finish right you're okay starting to build back. where do you find yourself and if you find yourself getting put in this position a lot getting the steps back to right. that situation right. that's so that's nice. going to be kind of two positions because okay. you're going to wind up in your best offensive position and then you're going to wind up in your best yeah and see position. you know I wish I say at that point you're always going to be working your guard and your sweeps yeah. I say at that point you really start focusing on open guard. and and if I you know if I had anything that. Any advice I wish I could have gotten and took when I was a blue belt, it would have been at the beginning of blue belt that, which is who gives a shit what your favorite submission is? Just pick one, the omoplata, and now sequence 15 different entries, and then what's most likely to happen when you fuck up, figure that out and just work that, because I think I would have had a way more productive blue belt. Like right. I feel like my blue belt was so chaotic that even though I'm a purple belt, I still feel like I'm doing a lot of blue belt shit. Right. Um, okay, and next question. You were not able to take Worlds last year. You took Pans at Purple. Uh, worlds you weren't able to fucking get. Will you, are you going to win Worlds this year? Yes, Should I, believe, I believe so. Money? I believe so. I, um, if, you, or, if I lose that money, right. will you pay me the right. money that I made? I believe I, so I got a little worried. I, a couple weeks ago, I tore my meniscus. I believe I haven't had anything real looked at, but from people, from people who have had a lot of very experience with this. Very smart people. Very smart people. They tell me, that I probably tore my meniscus. So I've been having a lot of pain and everything, but with a little ibuprofen, I'm like four weeks out, with a little ibuprofen and a knee sleeve or a knee brace, um, I'm able to roll hard. I have to stay out of certain positions, yeah. but um, I'm able to roll and hard. And Lawrence is November, Vegas? November, Pans will be in September. Okay. You're um, doing both. Yeah, of course. Okay. And then I may get, get something in between there. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's the that's the goal. I don't nice. see anybody. I don't see anybody. I fought, I wrestled in both the um, heavyweight and the 195 divisions of pretty much everybody who's been there at least this year over the past year. Um, I've seen them all. I think I can take everyone in uh, most of those divisions. Um, I believe Keith from Co American Combat Club is back in uh, heavyweight, so I may wrestle at 195. A lot of the so guys you can duck him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ducking him. Right on. Well, all right, guys. We're going to wrap this one up, but we're probably going to do another one of these for you next week. And uh, we'll sit down with some of the local guys tonight or tomorrow night and, and hit you with that. Bonus tracks. Bonus tracks. <laughs>